Let's look ahead to Wednesday. There are 10 games on. There is value all over the shop. There's streaming options, long-term options. Let's check what's on my radar. An injury updated, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I'm replacing the books that I looted with ones that I've already read. I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at basketballmonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at redrock underscore b-ball, on TikTok at redrock underscore b-ball, and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers get $150 in bonus bets if you place a $5 bet. Win or lose, go to fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Be a double banger. Watch the video. Listen to the audio, hit subscribe, ring the bell, give it a thumbs up, and leave your comments down below. Did you succeed in acquiring any of the winners, which is an unfortunate way to phrase it, after the injuries of TJ McConnell, Andrew Nempard, Benedict Matherin, Aaron Neesmith, Vince Williams, Killian Hayes, Jaden Ivey, Alec Burks, Chris Boucher, bloody heaps of them, isn't there? We'll talk about a little bit of that in this show here today. We are looking at the games on... Wednesday, there are 10 of them on, on January the 10th. Let's take a look at what we need to look at. I'm going to guess that Lamella Ball is out, but of course we don't have that official injury report yet from the Charlotte Hornets. We're still waiting uh, on that, or unless we do have it. No, we do have the official injury report. Absolute W. So Lamella Ball is out. Gordon Haywood is out. Uh, Big Marky Williams is out. We know Cade Cunningham's out, minimum seven to 10 days. Um, so let's let's look at that as a two to three week injury. I'm guessing with him, as we talked about earlier, and I'll, I'll talk about it. I'm sure at another point as well. Isaiah Stewart remains out. General Saunas, Jimmy Butler remains sidelined for the Miami Heat for how long? Nobody knows. DeAndre Hunter is out. Dylan Brooks is out. Draymond Green is out. Looks like maybe return at the start of next week. Uh, I've got an update just right now on Dayron Sharp, hyperextended left knee. Uh, cool. So he's not going to Paris, obviously. Um, yeah, so hyperextension doesn't actually tell you what the injury is, so I'd like some more information on that. Caleb Martin is the new doubtful legend. This is since Christmas that he's been doubtful. We are, what, how many days? Almost three weeks removed from Christmas, two and a half weeks. He's been doubtful every day. Pick up your game, you dickheads. Um, Kyle Lowry is doubtful. We're going to keep doing this, are we? The Heat, the heat back to being one of the worst injury reporting teams. Lowry had a wrist sprain yesterday. Came back, sat on the bench, but never re-entered the game. So that opens up more opportunities in Miami. Joel Embiid has been downgraded to doubtful. That is obviously not encouraging with that. Um, uh, actually, no, now he's been ruled out. Left knee swelling, so he's officially ruled out now. Uh, that's not great. They had like three days off and he's still out. So yeah, we're getting to the case where Embiid might not qualify for MVP. Hmm. Otto Porter is doubtful. See if there's anyone else. That, oh yeah, they they actually just chucked PJ Washington onto the doubtful list as well, and that official Charlotte Hornets injury report. So PJ is doubtful. Are we going to do the doubtful dance with him? I hate this team. All right, let's. What else are we going to look at? Uh, said yeah, Otto Porter doubtful. PJ Washington doubtful. Cody Martin is officially questionable. Brandon Miller is off the injury report. Apparently he'd been ill, but that that explains his shit performances, I guess. The Celtics dropped a couple on us. Drew Holiday, Al Horford, and Chris Dabbs Porzingis are all questionable. It is worth noting that this is the first day of a back-to-back for the Celtics, so Horford is going to sit one of them, and I'm going to guess that Drew and Chris Tapps are going to sit one of them as well. They're in the middle of a pretty busy stretch, and they are just managing their players, so I would expect all of these guys to get some time off. Rob Covington has been ruled out for the Sixers, so he was questionable, but he has been ruled out. Um, DeAnthony Melton, I'm double-checking if there's updates on him. No, he remains questionable. Tari Eason, haven't got the update yet on... Tari, again, things just changed. No, we do. Tari is actually out now. There you go. Zion Williamson is um, uh, questionable. Haven't got the official update on that one yet, so I'm listing him questionable. Same with Jose Alvarado. Who else do we have coming down here on this list? Tobias Harris is probable. So, Oh, actually, he's off the injury report now, Toby, so he's ready to go. Jason Tatum will play. Uh, Trey Lyles is playing on Tuesday. They're going to Tuesday, Wednesday, back-to-back, so I expect that he's okay. Sam Howes is off the injury report, so he's back for the Celtics. And then just as I was recording, or not recording, as I was preparing the the graphics, the Hawks released an injury report that had Trey Young as probable, but very interestingly, Clint Capella 
as questionable. Capella with Achilles soreness, a problem that has plagued him for three years, basically. And what we know there is obviously if Capella is out, Okongwu steps up. And I do think we are going to get a strong second half from Anyeka Okongwu, but that is where we sit with those injuries at the moment. The two teams that have the Wednesday, Thursday back-to-back, it's the Celtics and the Thunder. The Thunder should be okay in terms of resting players, although they do have a jam-packed schedule coming up. The Celtics are going to sit somebody. It's Is it Horford, Holiday, Porzingis? One of these guys or a couple of these guys will be out Wednesday. Some will be out Thursday. So we just look to stream in the, the Pritchards or the Houses or a Cornette in certain situations as well, especially if they do sit Porzingis and Horford together, which I don't think they will. But if they do, there's an opportunity that could arise there for a big Luke Cornette game or a Pastel Donata game from Nemeas Keita. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL regular season is done and dusted, but it is still time, or there is still time, to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. Not a money line bet, nothing special, just a $5 bet. And they give you $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. It is guaranteed bonus bets. You can check out their app. It's so easy to use, so many different bet types, money lines, straight ups, which is the same thing. Uh, sides, totals, futures, player props, and of course, the parlays. They've got live same-game parlays. You can find bets in their Explore tab as well. They've also got the new Parlay Hub where people create their parlays, stick them in the Parlay Hub, and you go in there and can follow those parlays. You can create your own parlays. You can just get in on the parlay action. So go to fanjul.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. Fanjul is an official partner of the NFL, and don't forget to gamble responsibly. So let's uh, let's look ahead to the streams of the day. And there are some names here that are pretty obvious, I think, as I just adjust myself in the chair. The stream of the day for 10 team is TJ McConnell. Somehow he hasn't even hit 50% rostered. A lot of people are asleep at the wheel. Go and add TJ McConnell everywhere. The news on Halliburton is minimum two weeks, so let's make that three to four weeks. Um, McConnell's the guy. He's not going to start, I don't think, but he'll get 24, 25 minutes. It's enough. If he gets 30, it's all over. All right, this is a must roster player and still available like 65% of leagues. You guys are all asleep. I didn't end up winning any fab bids for McConnell. Someone, Mike Barner, dropped $300 in industry pickup. I've had like, I think I had 170 on him, but I think I even ended up coming third in that one. Didn't get Nembard either. Had like 90 on him, didn't get him. So I ended up winning none of them, which is an L for me. The 12-team stream of the day is Andrew Nembard. I think he will start. He's not as good as an all-round player as McConnell for fantasy, not even close to it but he's going to get a big role or a bigger role, and that should be pretty strong. 14-team is Killian Hayes with the absence of Cade Cunningham. The 16-teamer is Chris Dunn, who continues to start in Utah. The Yahoo points and ESPN points is Timothy John McConnell. I don't really think there's much more we need to talk about with that. We've got the first matchup, what is on my radar, in the SAC versus CLT matchup. That's where we're at with that. Kings are on a back-to-back for the Hornets on the buy low, sell high. Earlier today, we had Terry Rozier. Let's see, is this his last game without LaMelo Ball? Does he continue to run at this high usage and assist rate? Probably, but long-term, no. In terms of streams, we are looking at the pencil Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. There is also news from the Kings that they're going to put Kevin Herter back into the starting lineup. I'm sure you're well aware that's not your indication to go and add him. It's an indication that Chris Duarte is terrible. Herter is not much better. Herter is not much better. Um, Malik Monk is their starting shooting guard. They just play him off the bench in starting minutes. And Mike Brown's really stubborn about this. Are they trying to get Monk the sixth man of the year? Maybe. Don't know. It doesn't matter. We're not adding Herter. In terms of streams for the Hornets, with Mark Williams out, we're still rolling with Big Dick Nick. Um, you can look at a Nick Smith in deeper leagues who looked pretty good in that last game, but it's definitely not going to be something that we should be considering as reliable. The Wizards and the Pacers. I watched Tyus Jones. He obviously had a terrible start to the season, had a ridiculous hot streak, and he sort of cooled off. He's sitting in the middle there. How they continue to utilize him and how that marginalizes Jordan Poole is a really interesting dynamic. What it means with DeLon Wright coming off the bench as well. But just watching a little bit of Tyus, who I do think is a chance to get moved at the deadline. For the Pacers, well, there's, there's so much to watch. I want to watch Benedict Matherin because he has been playing much better. He's scoring better. I'm a little bit... I don't know that he can, can, can do enough in uh, peripheral categories to be an absolute must roster, but it's okay to grab him. And there are just so many players on this team to watch. There's McConnell, there's Nempard, there's Neesmith, there's Heald, there's Matherin, there's Sticks, Jalen Smith. There's so many guys that you can all justify to stream in for 12s and some for 10s. Your stream of the Wizard side is Kulabali, but we, that's, that's a deeper league thing. And then, of course, it's Timothy John. But, you know, Sticks and Nempard and Neesmith are all right at the top of that list and Matherin as well, if he is still available. Minnesota and Boston, this is a back-to-back for the Wolves. 
heading into this one for the Celtics. I do want to watch Derek White, who had been awesome last week or so. Cooled off. The shooting has fallen away. He's going to get, I'm guessing, an opportunity to do a little bit more if we see someone like Drew or Porzingis out in this game. So let's see if we can get some of that efficiency back from White. In terms of streams, Kyle Anderson's probably the guy in Minnesota. Nas Reed, if he's available, that's more 14-team league stuff, 12 for, for Reed. And then Slam and Sammy Hauser might have a really increased role in Boston. Just watch that Celtics injury report to see who is available and who isn't. The Spurs and the Pistons. What a game. We're waiting for this one for ages, and the Pistons aren't going to win. They've got no Cade. Well, maybe they do. They're on a back-to-back with no Cade. It's going to be disgusting. Devin Vassell has been absolutely rolling at the moment. We detailed it on the buy low, sell high. His steal rate is double. He's shooting 47% from three. He is going to cool off. I don't know whether he does it here or not, but I just want to see what he's doing because he's rolling at like an absolute top 20 level at the moment. So let's pay attention to that. For streams, it is Jeremy Sohan that I think he's worth looking at. Obviously, Trey Jones, but he's been snapped up in a lot of spots. And then for the Pistons, there is quite a few options. There is Hayes, there is Burks, there is Sasser, there is Ivy. Maybe there's Asar Thompson. We'll get a better idea on Tuesday, but Hayes is still the guy. Or Ivy, if he's available, I would look at, and then I would go to Hayes after him as a stream option. The Thunder and the Heat is the next one. We talked about Jalen Williams' absurd run at the moment. Let's watch it. How does that look? What is his usage sitting at? But more importantly... Is he going to block a shot a game? Or is he going to continue to be a 66% shooter from three? No, is the obvious answer. Can he improve his free throws? What happens to the rest of the percentages? He's on an absolute hot streak. In terms of Bam, I want to see that. Bam has been like solid, but there's always something a bit off. Like the field goals are a bit down or the free throws are a bit down. We know he's not a big shot blocker. So while he's been very good and somehow leading this team to a record that makes no sense given their roster, his overall fantasy production out of bio has not been that strong. So I just want to see if we can get a level of consistency out of Bam. In terms of streams, it is Lou Dort for the Thunder. We know that bites us on the deck so many times, so just be aware of it. And then for the Heat, it probably is Josh Richardson. But with Kyle Lowry out, that's going to have to boost Richo up there. But you might see random stuff from guys like Little Chungus, Nikola Jovic with Caleb Martin, doubtful. Kevin Love is a pretty strong streamer there as well. Obviously, Jaime Jaquez, um, with the absence of Butler, he just gets like 40 minutes a night when Butler is out. Philadelphia and Atlanta. I still want to watch what Kelly Oubre is doing with these players out, especially Embiid. And if Melton is out, Oubre's value continues to be okay. I would always look to sell high on that, but let's see how that looks. And then for the Hawks, it's a Kongwu. He crossed over with Capella quite a bit last game, and now Capella's questionable. Is this the start of a strong run? I don't know, but I definitely want to watch it. In terms of streams, it's obviously Paul Reed in Philadelphia. Uh, he's well ahead of uh, Marcus Morris because Tobias Harris is going to be back. So Paul Reed is our stream. And then for the Hawks, they're one of the worst streaming teams out there. Trent Forrest, at some point, Kobe Bufkin is going to be on this list and they are going to make trades and things are going to change around. But Trent Forrest, if you're in like a 30-team league, maybe. Houston and Chicago. I want to watch Cam Whitmore. I think he's been very impressive. Now, I don't think he's going to do enough to be streamable in, in, in 12-team leagues, but he's outplaying Tate. He's outplaying Jalen Green. He's out playing a men Thompson, but it's just the minutes are low. Now, Tari Eason is out again, so I just want to watch Whitmore. And if I'm in a deeper league, he's a stream option for sure. For the Bulls, Zach Levine, is he going to come off the bench again? Is he going to take nine shots and shoot 22%? I doubt all three of those things happen, but how they utilize him, what his role is, is he on a restriction? Does he look passive? Like All that stuff is really important to watch. Caruso is probably the best stream option there on the Bulls, definitely ahead of a Pat Williams and an Io DeSumo. Pelicans and Warriors... Trey Murphy has really struggled since a couple of good games early on, but Zion, we're waiting on that one. Murphy, I do think is a hold in category leagues, but not in points leagues. But let's see if we can get something better out of him. For the Warriors, we know they're all in, all up to shit creek. No Chris Paul, no Draymond Green. Um, what do they do with their lineup? Because their starting lineup last game did not work at all. So I'm guessing Kaminga continues to start, but I don't think it's going to be next to Wiggins. So there's going to be changes there for sure. So let's watch Kaminga, who I do think is a hold. Not sure if it lasts, though. We'll see. In terms of streams for the Pelicans, it probably is Larry Nance we look at. If Herb Jones is available, you can go that, that way. And for the Warriors, I do like Trace Jackson Davis, who outplayed Looney and Sharich last game pretty comfortably. Does he get beaten up a little bit by Valanciunas? I guess that's a possibility, so you've got to be aware of it. But I still think that he is worth having for the time being on a 12-team roster, especially categories not as much in a points league. Denver and Utah. The headmaster, Jamal Murray, continues to just do things at a really high level. So I want to continue to watch what he's doing, how much of that is sustainable, <clears throat> his defensive stats, his shooting numbers, which continue to be amazing. Let's see what Jamal is able to uh, get, get going. Well, Keontae George, not doing a huge amount because you see his low minutes, but his shooting has improved. I won't say it's fixed, but it's improved. He's like 39% from three and I think 48% from two over the last 10 games. He scored 19 points last game. 
Until he, if he gets the starting job back and plays 30, then I would consider a grab in 12s. But a lot of the issues have been marginally fixed, the shooting stuff. So let's continue to watch that. In terms of streaming for the Nuggets, Christian Brown or Peyton Watson are guys we look at. And then for the Jazz, Chris Dunn's available everywhere. And you know, what do you have last game? Like steals, blocks, 13 assists. This team still continues to be a confusing one in terms of rotations. But there is a little bit of value there in Dunn. And they've what, won seven of their last eight or something like that. Pretty, um, pretty handy win-loss record of recent days. Today's episode is also brought to you by Better Help. <clears throat> we are here in 2024. 2023 is in the rearview mirror, but you don't have to forget everything that happened in 2023 because there were positive things that happened. It might have been one of the worst years of your life. That's possible. But you can always find something positive to take out of it and to build upon those strengths and turn them into long-lasting change items. That's what therapy can help you do. Help you find the little things that you can do to improve your life, your relationships, your work, whatever that is. Finding those things and building on them rather than trying to do these big, crazy, extreme resolutions and get the changes into your life that really stick. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be suited to your schedule, to be flexible and very convenient. You'd fill out a brief questionnaire. They match you up with a therapist. You see how you guys click. If you don't, you can change to another therapist with no charge. Celebrate the progress that you've already made. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA today to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on NBA. Okay, what else is on my radar? What other games have we got left? We've got the uh, Raptors and the Clippers. This is a back-to-back for Toronto. We're going to get a good look at this uh, for Toronto on Tuesday with no Yucca Pertle out for the next two-plus weeks. I do think that there is a chance they start Jonte Porter, but Chris Boucher is still the guy that I'm looking at there. For the Clippers, <clears throat> I just put Russell Westbrook there because he's still being rostered everywhere. He's an okay stream guy when you're looking for assists, but under no circumstances is he a must-roster player. Let's see if he changes my mind. He won't. In terms of stream guys, it is Boucher pretty clearly. And then behind him, I think they could start Gary Trent as well. That's a possibility and go back to a Siakam at the five lineup. So Trent might be on that mix as well. For the Clippers, it's always going to be Norman Powell. Don't think he needs to be a must roster guy, but he's always a stream option for us. If we want to look at chunky guys, the Wednesday through Sunday, we've got Wednesday as a high volume day. Friday is a high volume day. So we're looking at Thursday, Saturday, Sunday as our streamable days. And we already know that the Milwaukee Bucks are the only team that has that. So Leaky Beasley's right at the top here with a Thursday, Saturday, Sunday, three quality game run over the last five days of this week. But then what about the other guys who've got two? Well, Torian Prince and the Lakers play Thursday, Saturday. Josh the Hitman Hart, Dante DiVincenzo with the Knicks play the Thursday, Saturday. Hartenstein, if he's somehow still available in your league. Hey, if you are watching this, is Hartenstein still available in your league? Please drop a comment down below. Lou Dort win the Thunder with the Thursday, Saturday. They've got the Wednesday game as well. So if you've got an availability to use someone on Wednesday, Thunder guys are there. Derek Jones and the Mavericks, Thursday, Saturday. And Eric Gordon with the Suns has the Thursday, Sunday combination as well. So there's some interesting players with two quality games in the final five days of this week. In terms of teams with five games in eight nights coming up starting Wednesday, there is a lot. This is a jam-packed portion of the schedule in the NBA. The Hawks, the Celtics, the Warriors, the Rockets, the Heat, the Pelicans, Thunder, Spurs, and Jazz. So we're going to really watch Victor Wembanyama with five games in eight nights. We're going to watch all the Celtics guys, the old-ass Warriors, Clay, Steph, what happens to them? Clint Capella and the Hawks. The Rockets should be okay. Jim Butler, well, he's not going to play. Um, Kyle Lowry's in danger, obviously. Zion, five games in eight nights. They'll be very closely monitoring that. So there is a lot of a a big jam-packed little portion of the schedule for these nine teams. Very important, and it gets a little bit hidden because it's sort of in the middle of a week. 10-team streamers for Wednesday. We're starting things off, obviously, with Timothy John McConnell. We go to Trey Jones after that, Killian Hayes, Andrew Nempard. Very strong, all 10-team all options, at least, tw- at the very worst, 12-team streams. Catavius Caldwell-Pope and Paul Reed. So there is a ton of availability and a ton of value here on this schedule for Wednesday. For 12-teamers, you start on that 10-team list and go down and see what you can get. Then we go to Alex Caruso, Aaron Neesmith, Big Dick Nick Richards, Josh Richardson, Sticks, Jalen Smith, and Kevin Love. These are 12 names that I've given you already who are unbelievable stream value players, I think, for the games on Wednesday. Even the deeper league ones, Chris Boucher, Chris Dunn. Like they're, they're probably 12 team worthy. Uh, Dunn, maybe not so much. Boucher, definitely. Fontecchio, Bubbles, Julian Champagne, Larry Nance, and Bilal Kulabali. There is just a lot of stream value available on Wednesday. For points leagues, we're going to start with McConnell, 
We're going to go to Hayes, Nempard, Kevin Love, Jeremy Sohan, and Jalen Smith. And that does a absolute rapid fire look ahead to Wednesday with 10 games on. Um, if you are here watching the show, be a double banger. Go listen to the audio. If you're on the, listening on the audio, come and watch the show. Give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Subscribe, notification bell. Leave your comments down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.